All right, here we go, guys. The spray foam guys did a fantastic job yesterday. And here's what we've got. We've got basically a two inch flash coat of this closed cell foam. Check out other video for some specifics about this type of foam. But this is closed cell, which typically isn't gonna be anywhere from R6 to maybe R7 per inch. This particular product is R7 per inch. And we're trying to lay it down at about two inches in thickness. Now it's, it's hard to get a perfect two inch thickness. But if you remember when I was touching these um, T studs before, this is a two by three. There's another two by three that's buried now encased in this spray foam. And that two by three is an inch and a half in thickness and you can't see the edge of that anymore. So what the guys did was when they sprayed this foam, they sprayed it in the cavity and they had it expand to about the distance of that uh, two by three, the thickness of that I should say, to get around two inches. And then they came in and on both sides of the stud, you're gonna see that applicator spray on both sides so that this spray foam now is basically continuous along this entire wall. Now for extra thermal break and a little extra boost in insulation value, I also sheet this house in Zip R, that zip system sheathing that's bonded to a insulation board. Now this is the R3, which is the thinnest uh, version. You can get it in R6, R9, or R12 as well. But now that I've got two inches of closed cell foam, I'm basically at R14, plus I've got the R3 on the outside. And what I like about this is both of those are pretty much continuous. So instead of standard studs where I'd have a thermal break, or pardon me, where I'd have a thermal bridge at every location, I really have that continuous. Now the big benefit of the closed cell foam though, in this assembly in my mind, is I've got some additional strength. I've got that racking resistance. Uh, I've heard reports that anywhere between 200% and 300% additional racking strength and shear value by adding that closed cell foam into this assembly. Now this wasn't a rated assembly, so I didn't have my engineer verify that. I'm not in a high wind load zone, but if you were in a spot that you were worried about tornadoes, uplift, that sort of thing, that's gonna benefit you. That also is benefiting me where my roof line connects. In my roof, I ran four inches of closed cell foam, foam on the roof line, and you can see how that's sprayed down to the top plate. That's really helping lock that roof down. Now, we also did run some Fasten Master frame fast screws into these rafters from below, and that's gonna help basically lock those rafters into this framing below. And then I've got Simpson bolts there. This one happens to be covered by foam right now. And those Titan HD bolts are locking my bottom plate down. So we've got a lot of additional structural rigidity, strength, uplift resistance by running this closed cell foam in here. All right, so that's the flash coat. Let me join the insulators in the other room and let's talk about the bats. All right, guys, if you haven't seen them in past videos, Ken Allison, Ken's with IDI Distributors. They're a giant insulation supply house that's stocking rock wool and spray foams and all kinds of different insulations. Ken, I introduced these guys to the flash portion, the closed cell foam, mm -hmm. and probably they've seen our other videos on this. Talk to me about the bat portion and why this is a good choice. Okay, when we get to the bat portion, we really need to make sure that first thing we've done is that we have enough plastic. If I pull this out of a cooler, mm -hmm. this is a vapor barrier. Yep. It's metal, could be plastic. Okay, what you see happening on here Condensation. Condensation. Yep. So plastic's no different. We've now got a layer of plastic here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the first thing I need to do is just make sure that I have enough plastic in order to, or enough insulation behind my layer of plastic in order to not condensate on the surface of yep. this. So in a wall where we're at, one inch would have been more than enough. Mm -hmm. As we get to the north, any of the people that are gonna try this up there, you have to have more in that wall. Sometimes it's gotta be R10, R13. It depends on where you're at. Mm -hmm. So document 147 from the SPFA will allow you to see how much of your insulation in your wall has to be the foam portion. Then the rest, you're simply filling in the bats. I've told people you could put gummy worms over the top. It wouldn't bother me. <laughs> as long as we're not making water. On a ceiling, we have to do a lot more. So when we flash and bat on a ceiling, we're typically three inches and more. Mm -hmm. in of, some of closed cell spray foam. Yes, in some cases it's gotta be over R25 on the roof deck. And let's just uh, review our science here. This is closed cell foam, which acts as a vapor barrier, meaning yes. that there's no drying that's happening through this. 
And this Correct. vapor barrier, one nice thing about closed cell is a vapor barrier in both directions, right? We're not gonna be able to have water go through this and condense on a cold sheathing if there was such a thing. Yes. And we're also not gonna get drying this direction through here. So we have to be a little cautious and what Ken is saying is, we'll put a link in the description, we need to make sure that in our climate zone, in Texas we don't need a lot, but in Minnesota you're gonna need a lot more. Absolutely. We have enough thickness of insulation before we get to the bat. So take it yes. over from there, Ken. Okay, so then what we've got going in now is an R15. We could use an R11. Where we're at, we could use really anything because we're not trying to get our insulation value out of the bat. Yeah, we've basically met code here already yes. with my three inch uh, zip R sheathing. And then this two inches we thought was roughly R, I guess that's roughly R14. Yes. So if we were in the north, we would have to meet whatever the code is designed to meet in order to finish out the R value. Plus the other thing on any fibrous insulation, you're not going to get your R value out of it unless it touches all six sides. That's right. So we have to meet up to the drywall. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm doing sound in a ceiling, that's not the case. I don't need to fill that cavity. Yep. But in this case, we really are going for sound. Mineral wool is a phenomenal product for sound. So now all we're trying to do is just make sure we come right up to the studs. We're not leaving any real gaps anywhere where we can just have dead space or air space going directly into the wall. So we'll get out of Chris, the way. Chris, you throw that, uh, that bat in for us, brother? Thank you. We'll let him get You know, back a couple other benefits of rock wool, I've used a lot of it over the years. Um, Ken mentioned the sound. It really makes a very, a very dead sounding house, uh, kind of like a recording studio. And in fact, my studio at the office that I uh, podcast in has rock wool that I've just covered with some filter fabric. Uh, the other benefit is there is some additional fire resistance here as well. Now we're going to be hanging sheetrock, which also gives fire resistance. But if something were to happen in that cavity, that rock wool is going to give us uh, some additional fire uh, benefit as well. Now you have to be a little cautious though, right? These R15 bats from Rockwell are three and a half inches thick. We don't want to put too much spray foam in that we'd have to compress that. So you need to be cautious and think about, all right, if I'm using a two by six, that's a five and a half inch cavity, two inches of spray foam. If that ends up being three inches of spray foam, we're going to have this R15 bat really bulging out of here. You can only compress this so much uh, before your insula or before your drywall is going to be pooching out. So be a little cautious on your thicknesses and think ahead of time. All right, two by six, two by eight, two by four. What am I doing? And also make sure your spray foam applicator is doing as uniform job as you can on that application. So you don't have big humps in your spray foam that the bat guy, when he comes in later and Chris is trying to push these in, won't be able to fit them in. One thing on that, Matt, another thing we want to talk about, this is grade one. Mm -hmm. You are getting energy penalties if you're not grade one on insulation. And often with fiberglass, you will see things like this. You'll see, you know, it's young guys in a hurry that are yep. building our buildings. Yep. Every bit of this is going to show up on an infrared camera. Yeah. And we'll, uh, you'll be able to see this in It'll the video. It'll degrade your R value of that cavity. I also like how Rockwell has started to label, maybe they've done this in the past, but I didn't notice it, but they're labeling their uh, bats with the R value on the bat. That's great for me as a builder because my inspector can see that R value. If this were safe and sound bats, which I have some right here actually, those are unlabeled. And in fact, that's a three inch bat. Now they still have an R value, but it's not a rated R value. So you wanna use the rated version on your exterior walls. The safe and sound bats are for interior walls. And we're trying to keep some sound from this room into the out of the master bedroom in the room next door. Ken, what else did we miss on this uh, T-stud flash and bat insulation video? I think we're doing well. You know, we've got the back of the T-stud covered. Everything's looking beautiful. These guys are doing a great job. I'm gonna get out of their way. Ken, thanks for coming on, guys. Thank you. I'll put a link to IDI below. That's where all the materials on this job site came from. They're a giant supply house. Um, but what you're gonna wanna find is a really good installer, whether that's a spray foam installer or your bat installer, maybe that's the same company. And IDI can help you with that as well because they've got some really well-trained people out in the field. Check out our videos. Ken and I made a couple different videos about the specific spray foam we used here and some new versions of spray foam. And we've got an attic assembly video coming out as well. But if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.